morning. Oh, here we are on a Sunday at work. Now, once in a blue moon, I'll get a drive or a saw start into the shop, and it will require a 4 to 20 milliamp speed reference. Now, you don't see that very often. Most of the speed references for the things we work on require a voltage speed reference. 0 to 10, 0 to negative 10, thereabouts. This box right here I put together, this is really cool. Let me show you the insides if I can get close enough. Right here. Got to get my glasses on, can't see. <laughs> this is where we apply an external DC voltage to power up the circuit. And I usually put plus and minus 12 reference to this ground point right here on these two terminals. Here, I will take the milliamp speed reference out of these two terminals and I'll put my meter down here in milliamp mode to monitor that milliamp output. Let's look inside. I don't have the circuit board bolted down, but look, there's not that much to it. There's an operational amplifier, a transistor right there, a resistor. There's the back side of the board. Here's the potentiometer up here that I use to adjust that milliamp output. Here's the jacks that connect the external power supply and the milliamp output. One output to the soft start or drive and one output in parallel so that I can monitor that milliamp output. Let's go watch how it works. Okay. I don't have the DC power supply that powers up this circuit turned on yet. So I'm going to hook the plus 12 lead to the plus terminal, the ground lead to the zero terminal, and the minus 12 lead to the minus terminal. Now, I'll set my meter to milliamp mode, put my red lead on the red terminal, my black lead on the black terminal. Now, let's power up the circuit. I've just turned on the external DC power supply. I'm going to increase the potentiometer. And look at that. We're going from zero milliamps up to 88.9, 89.1 milliamps. And this is variable by this potentiometer right here. You can go from 4 up to 20 milliamps and beyond. Now most of the milliamp speed references I've seen come into the shop have been 4 to 20 milliamps. 4 milliamps to 20 milliamps. And this little box right here will do it for you. <laughs> when I get back to the house, I'll put up the diagram, I'll put up my drawing of that circuit right there is very very simple the mechanical part of making it was harder than the actual running of the circuit there's not many parts in there <laughs> always if you can go with the easy <laughs> makes your life a little bit easier <laughs> no need to make th things uh, more complicated than they need to be this box right here will do it It'll give you a 4 to 20 milliamp speed reference if you ever need it. All right, folks. Thank you very much for stopping by. I always enjoy it when y'all come over to see what I'm experimenting with next. <laughs> Go out there and make you one of these. You might need it one day. All right. We'll see you next time.
evening all. Here we are at the house. I got to hurry up. It's getting dark. Here's the circuit for the variable current source. It uses an LM741. Now I don't show the plus VCC and minus VCC pins in this diagram right here. Plus VCC is on pin 7 and minus VCC is on pin 4. That's the same connection on this end of the potentiometer minus VCC and over here on the collector of this PNP transistor minus VCC. Now what's going on here? Here is the output red terminals of the variable current source and here are the black terminals of that same variable current source. When we apply, and I used plus and minus 12 for plus VCC and minus VCC, when we apply with an external power supply, current flows, and that is if we have a load out here, and our load was our ammeter from the Fluke DMM. Current flows through here, the 100 ohm resistor, up the red terminals, they'll be positive, into the black terminals, emitter, base, into the operational amplifier, and the emitter, base, collector, back to the source. The potentiometer allows us to vary from zero volts to minus 12 volts DC with this potentiometer right here. Now let's say, for example, we set our potentiometer so we had negative 2 volts right here. We would have that same right here and current would flow through the 100 ohm resistor and we would have from here to here that 2 volts. Well, 2 volts divided by 100 ohms is 20 milliamps. And that is what we see flow through here. The purpose of the PNP transistor, and try to get one with a beta of 100. They usually work the best in these situations right here. But it increases the capability of current flow in this circuit right here. If we didn't have that transistor and we were using the output of the operational amplifier, the most we would get was maybe 5 milliamps, 10 milliamps most, regardless of what this was set to. There's just not enough drive on that LM741. So this right here increases our current flow through here. Now on my box, we were able to go from 0 to 89 milliamps. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And so like say we set this to 3 volts right here. We'd have negative 3, negative 3. We would have 30 milliamps flow through here. <laughs> That's cool. That is cool. Amazing how that works. Now you could test LEDs with this. Um, say you set this to 2 volts, you would have 20 milliamps flow through here. You could put the anode of your LED right here and the cathode right here and it would light up that LED. You could test that LED. Let's look at the pinouts of that dip package for the LM741. Pin 1 and pin 5 are offset null. What that allows you to do is you can zero the output if you put a potentiometer between pins 1 and 4 and you can adjust that potentiometer so that you have zero or whatever voltage you want out there. But usually 
it's to set the output to zero. Pin two is the negative, the inverting input to the operational amplifier. Pin three is the non-inverting input. That's minus N on pin two and plus N on pin three. Pin six here is your output. That's the output of the operational amplifier. Pin seven is plus VCC. And I applied uh, in the uh, test video there, I applied plus 12 volts DC here. And pin 4 is minus VCC, and I applied minus 12 volts DC right there. Let's go look at the pinouts of the PNP transistor, 2N3906. Here is the PNP transistor, whose base was connected to the output of the LM741, whose collector was tied to minus VCC, which we used a negative 12 volts, and whose emitter was tied to the uh, black terminal post right there. And its pinout is pin 1 emitter, pin 2 base, and pin 3 collector. Where you go, folks? Go out there and build you one of those. You'll have a, fun, a lot of fun experimenting with that. It's an amazing little circuit right there. Variable current source. Amazing. <laughs> amazing how simple that is. It's the simplest circuits that provide you with the most functionality it seems like in this line of work <laughs> you always got to have little tools like this laying around so that you can uh, you can work on industrial electronics it's getting dark I gotta cook some dinner I got me some macaroni I made the other day in the in the refrigerator and I'm gonna heat that up <laughs> add a little water down in there and bring it to a boil oh oh um, I'm gonna be away for a couple of weeks it looks like a week at the most tomorrow I gotta go get two teeth pulled out of my head <laughs> I gotta go to the dentist <laughs> my parts are falling off <laughs> And uh, so, uh, uh, no worries though. Uh, me and the pain in my pain in my head, we've made good friends here over the last two or three weeks. <laughs> Has it been that long? Maybe a month. I can't remember when the pain started. A dog, huh? Shoo wee! I tell you what. I tell you what. Every now and then, it's like lightning bolts are driven through my brain. <laughs> but like I said, me and the pain, we've made good friends. <laughs> it's not so bad as when it first started. Okay. Well, that's enough of that rambling. i got to get out of here and, and uh, go to the dentist tomorrow. And so, uh, wish us luck. <laughs> I'll be a few uh, few grams lighter by tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> all right, good night, all. Oh, sometimes I get to talking too much. <laughs>